Good evening, um, God's people of St. Peter and all those who are uh, viewing this video, this recording on Monday, Thursday. Blessings to you on this Holy Week. I put together a brief um, service for you and uh, meditation uh, for your Thursday. It is um, Monday, Thursday, uh, a day where we gather around the word trusting that god is with us when we gather around the word and god in christ continues through his word to speak to us Let us remember God's forgiveness to us with these words. God who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace we have been saved. Our sins are forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ. Almighty God has strengthened us with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in our hearts through faith. Amen. Our dialogue comes from Psalm 116. I love the Lord who has heard my voice and listened to my supplication. For the Lord has given ear to me whenever I call. How should I repay the Lord for all the good things God has done for me? I will lift the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all God's people. Precious in your sight, O Lord, is the death of your servants. O Lord, truly, I am your servant. I am your servant, the child of your handmaid. You have freed me from my bonds. I will offer you the sacrifice of thanksgiving and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all God's people, in the courts of the Lord's house, in the midst of you, O Jerusalem. Would you pray with me? Holy God, source of all love, on this night of his betrayal, Jesus gave us a new commandment, to love one another as he loved us. Write this commandment in our hearts, and give us a will to serve others as he was a servant of all. Your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading comes from Exodus chapter 12, verses 1 to 14. The Lord said to Moses in Aaron in the land of Egypt, 
This month shall mark for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell the whole congregation of Israel that on the 10th of this month, they are to take a lamb for each family, a lamb for each household. If a household is too small for a whole lamb, it should join its closest neighbor in obtaining one. The lamb shall be divided in proportion to the number of people who eat of it. Your lamb should be without blemish, a year old male. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats. You should keep it until the 14th day of this month. Then the whole assembled congregation of Israel shall slaughter it at twilight. They should take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and the linton of the houses in which they eat it. They should eat the lamb the same night. They should eat, eat it roasted over the fire with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. Do not eat any of it raw or boiled in water, but roast it over the fire with its head, legs, and inner organs. You should eat you should let none of it remain until the morning. Anything that remains until the morning, you shall burn. This is how you should eat it. Your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand. And you should eat it hurriedly. It is the Passover of the, of the Lord. For I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike down every firstborn of the land of Egypt both human beings and animals, and all of the gods of Egypt. I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. The blood should be a sign for you on the houses where you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no plagues shall destroy you when I strike, strike the land of Egypt. This day should be a day of remembrance for you. You shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord, Throughout your generations, you shall observe it as a perpetual ordinance. ordinance. War of God, war of life. Thanks be to God. Our gospel comes from the gospel of John, chapter 13, verses 1 to 17 and 30b to 35. Now, before the festival of the Passover... Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around him. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You do not know now what I'm doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, One who has bathed does not need to wash, except for the feet who is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you, for he knew who was to betray him. For this reason, he said, not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, had put on his robe, and had returned to the table, he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. 
For I have set you an example that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly, I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment that you love one another just as I have loved you. You also shall love one another. And by this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Well, this evening is Monday, Thursday. And you may ask, what does Monday mean? The word Monday means a mandate. And it comes from the Greek root mandatum. Today is a holy Thursday because we gather around God's word in which reminds us of Jesus' mandate or commandment to love one another just as he has loved us. We see in the Gospel of John that right before facing death, Jesus spent some time with his disciples as they commemorate the Passover. Earlier, we read the portion of the Exodus story in which God liberated God's people from slavery from under Egypt. On their last evening in Egypt, before they were free from slavery, God's people gathered in their homes for a meal. And they were instructed to mark their household doorposts with the blood of an unblemished lamb. Then God will pass over these Mark households, sparing death for any member of the family who live there. These serve as a sign that people living in these households belong to God. It was a way for God to claim God's people as death passed over the entire land of Egypt. Thus, this part of our calendar year is called the Passover. It reminds us of the time that God passed over each Israelite household on the last night that God, God's people remained in Egypt before making the journey from slavery into freedom. This week, we commemorate also belonging to God. And in the same way, we commemorate the fact that God in Jesus claims us as his own. During Holy Week, we remember that Jesus gave himself for each one of us in love so that we could find the way of peace that leads to wholeness and ultimately back to God. On another night, similar to the Passover, Jesus served as the unblemished lamb whose blood marked us and claims us as God's people again. On that night, Jesus passed from death to life, offering us life through him. And on the night of his arrest and betrayal before his crucifixion, death and resurrection, and before his passage from death to life, he sat with his disciples and gave them a new commandment love one another just as i have loved you you also should love one another he demonstrated that what this commandment looked like by becoming a servant by offering service to other so on this night he washed his disciples feet to show them what he meant he took on a task that was given to slaves 
or sometimes children, the people who were in the lowest class of society. In the time of Jesus, the slaves and children were instructed to wash the feet of people as they entered the homes. If people really wanted to humiliate someone, they will assign this job to him or her. It was a job no one really liked. By washing his disciples' feet, Jesus showed what being one of his disciples really meant. He meant to lower oneself to do such tasks to allow others to flourish. So today we ask God to make us good servants, to continue to shape us into his disciples, driven by love for others. God through Jesus continuously calls us to follow this mandate daily. Give yourselves in service to others. During the last few weeks, we have been caring for others and considering the well-being of others by washing our own hands so that we will not spread the coronavirus. We are doing what we are what we have been asked to do care for the well-being of others. Next time you wash your hands, or maybe even after you read this meditation or listen to this meditation, think of the love that Jesus poured out on each of us. As we close our meditation on Monday, Thursday, I would like to share these words found in some of the ELCA online resources for in-home worship. Jesus Christ is our forgiveness. He is the Lamb whose blood marks the doors of our houses and bodies. In the power of the Spirit, He has washed our feet in our lives, and He turns us towards our neighbors. In this world and in the cross proclaimed tomorrow and the resurrection proclaimed on Saturday night, Easter comes to hold us already. Amen. Have a blessed Holy Week, people of God, beloved people of God.